relationships. Uh, you know, the stature of your kingdom, the, your reputation as a fighter, your honor, your uh, re religious principles, and so on and so forth are all very important uh, to determine your status in the society of Kshatriyas. Uh, just as in the society of Brahmanas, learning, piety, austerity, uh, the ability to teach, to preach, to convert, to make disciples, uh, these are all considerations of the power or status of a Brahmana. Uh, sometimes a Brahmana uh, will have only one disciple, but that disciple will have thousands or millions of disciples. Uh, so, so many things are possible uh, for them, and they work in different ways. Uh, they're not material ways, but they're spiritual ways, because they're based on the quality of the knowledge that they hold and disseminate. So the quality of the Brahmana's knowledge depends upon their purity, their learning, their austerity. And uh, these qualities are very much uh, in demand in Brahmana society. So Krishna has some Kshatriya friends and some Brahmana friends. Uh, and of course his family in Vrindavan are all Vaishyas. Vaishyas are the mercantile class who are also into farming, cow, pro cow protection. Uh, agricultural production in every different area, banking, commerce, transportation, that sort of thing, trade. So uh, even among the Shudras, Krishna has friends. He's friends with everybody. Uh, uh, that uh, Everybody loves Krishna because Krishna has no boundaries. Uh, Krishna is everything and everywhere, and any kind of relationship is acceptable to him. So if you want to approach Krishna as a friend, on an equal level, that's fine. In fact, Krishna even accepts us uh, serving him on a superior level. Uh, for example, Krishna's mother and father, Krishna's teachers, his uncles, aunts, uh, like uh, Kunti, uh, his uh, uh, superiors in the... Um, lineage of the Yadu dynasty, uh, Grandfather Bhishma, for example. Uh, so many uh, elderly devotees in the different dhamas in the spiritual world, uh, Dasharat, King Dasharat, uh, the father of Lord Ram, they're all rendering devotional service in the capacity of a superior uh, parent type role. So Krishna accepts us in those roles as well. Oh, that uh, parental role is called Vatsalya Ras. Vatsalya Ras means parenthood. The final Ras, and the, actually the most pleasing Rasa, is Madhurya Rasa. And in this Rasa, the devotee becomes Krishna's wife or girlfriend. Uh, the uh, wifely relationship is called Svakya Ras, and the girlfriend relationship is Parakya Ras. All of Krishna's Conjugal relationships in Vrindavan are in Parakya Ras. He does not become married until he goes uh, to Matra and Dwarka. And those are Svakya Ras, married uh, relationships, marriage relationships. So he has his girlfriends when he's a prince in Vrindavan. Uh, his father Nanda Maharaj is the king of Vrindavan. Uh, so Krishna is the prince of Vrindavan. He has so many girlfriends. But when he goes, <clears throat> excuse me, when he goes to Matra and Dwarka, then he uh, starts, he becomes the Marian type. And uh, he uh, has those kind of relationships in those dhammas, in those pastimes. So, as I brought up the other day, the question is now, what do you want to do with the rest of your eternity? Huh? All the liberated spiritual entities in the spiritual world are in deep love and affection with Krishna. And they're doing exactly what they want to do. And that's where they want to be. And they are so happy and so satisfied. They just want to be there for the rest of eternity. And um, we also have a role that we would like to play in Krishna's pastimes. And the process of sadhana bhakti is to 
uncover this role. So, of course, our principal relationship is with Krishna in one of these five sthai bhavas, five principal rasas. But we also have relationship with all of other Krishna's devotees. His mother, his father, his friends, his servants, his lovers. Huh? Uh, and these relationships are <laughs> extremely rich and complex and beautiful. Sort of like an Indian movie, you know, <laughs> with all these different characters. And um, their beautiful relationships and interconnections and how they play. Uh, these pastimes are play. They're, they're not struggle. They're not serious. Um, like I said, everybody in the spiritual world is doing what they really want to do for the rest of eternity. What makes them just so happy that they forget their own names sometimes. Uh, this is spiritual bliss. And this spiritual bliss uh, pours out of the heart of the devotee when they connect with their actual original identity. And when they reach that realization, then they're free to leave the material world and go to the spiritual world and live uh, forever. And who wouldn't want to live forever if you could just be, you know, deliriously happy every day of your life for that length of time? Who wouldn't want to live forever? The other question uh, was about, you know, what what is my inner state or what is my life like uh, from where I sit. <laughs> well, I can see three kinds of consciousness. Uh, the uh, external sensory consciousness of the material world. Um, a consciousness of myself. In other words, uh, an awareness of all the different stuff that's going on in my consciousness and um, the consciousness of the spiritual world through the senses of my spiritual body. And those are the three uh, types of consciousness, external, marginal, and internal, or material, uh, the, uh, the jivatma, the spirit soul, and the Supreme Lord, the spiritual world, the devotees, and all their wonderful activities uh, in that realm. Those are the three types of Krishna's energy, and we can be conscious of all of them simultaneously. Uh, it's not a problem when we have trained our minds by mantra, and meditation, and so on like that for a sufficient length of time. It can be done, and it can be done in this lifetime relatively quickly. Uh, so I was lucky, I just threw myself into it, and uh, somehow or other, um, caught the essence uh, because consciousness is very powerful consciousness is the universal solvent it penetrates everything it gets to the bottom of everything you can know whatever you really want to know so therefore we should desire to know those things that are most worth knowing uh, if you were to ask me what of all the things that you know is uh, the, the most worthwhile, I would have to say it would be my uh, development of consciousness of the internal spiritual world. Because uh, in that consciousness, I am not, as you see me, <laughs> in this material world that we kind of both share, hang out in. Um, in this material world, I'm a you know, older fella, you know, from back east and uh, went to college and was a hippie for a long time and did a lot of crazy things. But then I traveled all over the world as a monk for many years, uh, visited many holy places in India, performed rituals there, and so on and so forth. So gradually, my consciousness changed. And uh, now it seems to be permanently altered. <laughs> no matter what I do, um, it stays focused on that spiritual realm. Because only in that realm uh, can I experience the pure love that I crave. The Lord 
is like an ocean of love. And when we open our hearts to him and we say, just, you know, come on in, make yourself at home. Uh, well, of course, he's already there. But when we realize and accept that he is our eternal partner, uh, life becomes so much easier. We don't have to work so hard. We don't have to think so hard. Uh, we don't have to uh, figure things out for ourselves because Krishna is there. And Krishna has much better intelligence than we do, much better insight into things. So if we just put things before him and request his um, opinion, he'll be happy to give it. Um, this isn't any kind of mystical, magical thing. Uh, doesn't require any special aptitude or talents or anything. Um, 